Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. Have I ever got an exciting antenna idea for you today? This is a potential game changer. We're coming up on that time of the year when people expect us to put decorations in and on our homes. Many homeowners associations allow people to place lights on the exterior of their homes, and many homeowners associations allow lights to be up year round, especially when they're not holiday specific, say like a string of white lights. We're allowed to keep them up permanently. That may not be the case for you, but if it is, this is a game changer. Let's discuss what this antenna is not, describe how it works, give you a materials list, most of which can be picked up at your local big box hardware store. I'll leave links in the description below. Let's install it and show you how to do that, and then we'll compare it to the station reference antenna. Let me quickly say this is not a video on how to send RF down a string of holiday lights and get some of those bulbs to light up. That's cool, I'll do that video someday, but that's not this video at all. This is a real bona fide dipole antenna that we're going to put up, and the lights are merely camouflage. They're going to hide our antenna in plain sight. As a matter of fact, the lights are going to be incapacitated, and I'll explain why in a second. We're going to need some antenna wire that matches the color of our holiday lights or holiday lights that match the color of the antenna wire we have in stock. I'm using white wire, being Tecco. It's silky smooth that does not tangle easily. We're going to need something to get the two ends of our dipole up. We can get this inexpensive item off of Amazon or we can pick up a LDG RBA one to one ballon. We're going to need some hooks to install our wire or hang our wire off of our gutter, our shingles, our drip edge, and these are the hooks that I am using. And finally, we need some holiday lights. Pick up the least expensive lights that you can get because remember, these lights will be non-functional. Again, more about that in a minute. My drawing skills are subpar that of my two-year-old granddaughter, but let's see if I can illustrate this well enough that you'll understand what we're going to do before we get out and do the install. We're going to take our roof clips. We're going to take and space them every so many inches or feet here on the edge of the house. And they will then hold everything in place as we build out our dipole and as we put our holiday lights on for camouflage. We'll take our actual dipole wire and then we're going to place it inside of the clips that are already installed over the drip edge or the shingles. Now, again, this is our actual dipole wire that we've pre-measured. Then we're going to take our holiday lights and we are going to put them over top of this dipole wire and we're going to conceal it, we're going to hide it. And so what you end up with will be decorations on top of your house that are exactly what your neighbors expect to see as they drive by your home year round. Let's talk theory, how is this going to work? Well, remember I said that the lights are going to be non-functional, so let's take care of that right now just so that nobody makes any mistake about what's happening here. Bye-bye electrical connection. These lights will not be plugged into any outlet anywhere. On every string of lights that's manufactured these days, at least in the US, presumably worldwide, there are three wires um, that transfer from one end to the other. And there's one particular wire that goes the entire distance. And you can see it here if I unravel and untwist I have a wire that's continuous the entire length of this string. So I have a couple of options at this point. This wire here with the lights, assuming all of these lights are working, I could take that single wire and I could run my RF all the way down the string through the lights. And most of you know what's going to happen. I'm going to light up several of these bulbs. Hey, this is a homeowners association. I'm trying to be inconspicuous here not draw attention. So why don't we use this wire that runs end to end all by itself? If we use that as our antenna wire and we run RF through that, we're good to go, right? Wrong. The RF is going to transfer out of this wire and it's going to bleed over, if that's the right term, into all the other wires in this bundle. And you're still going to light up 
the bulbs were no longer inconspicuous. We're drawing attention to ourselves. This is why I said early on that we want to disable the functionality of the lights. Okay, well, let's put up a separate wire, which is what I'm going to do. I'm showing it here in yellow just for contrast. Why don't we run our RF signal through this wire and then just put the lights over top of it? And when I use a white instead of yellow wire, it's going to disappear. Good to go, right? Wrong. The RF is going to transfer from this wire, and because these will be in such close proximity to it, the RF is going to get into this and light up the bulb. Again, we're drawing attention to ourselves. And if you're like me and you operate 100 watts single sideband voice, these lights are going to pop to the fluctuation of my voice. Right? That's how single sideband voice works. We peak with the peaks of our voice. Here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to take every one of these bulbs out. You're going to laugh at me. Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to take and snip off our copper leads. See that? Copper leads, gone. Now I have a bulb <laughs> that I, from my perspective, can't transfer energy. Now, what we have here is the need to put this back into its little holder. All right. Now there are no wires sticking out of this little socket. We're gonna plug it back in again. Actually, I should call that a plug. No wires sticking out of the plug, back into the socket. And now what I have is the ability to transfer RF down this line and the bulb has no continuity to it. It can't light up, can it? I mean, that's what my brain tells me. So yes, I'm going to pop out every one of these bulbs. I'm going to trim off the copper leads, and we're going to make every light bulb non-functional. So if we want this up for the long term, the friction has pretty much left the light bulb here. And I'm afraid over time it could pop out. You may need to hit this with a little bit of crazy glue to keep all of these light bulbs in here. You're saying to yourself, that's a lot of work, Bob. You know how many lights are on this string? Well, if you can't get a wire antenna up outside, and this would give you the ability to do it because it's completely camouflage. It looks like holiday light. A little time with some crazy glue is not that bad of an investment. Collect and organize all of your supplies and then install your holiday lights just like you would any other year. Where shingles overlap, there's usually a gap where you can push in this clip. And if you need to go over top of a gutter, you just reorient the clip. But remember, these are aluminum gutters. I used one of the many online dipole calculators to determine what length I should cut this wire to for resonance on 14285, and then I pre-cut it at the workbench. I don't know what possessed me and why I didn't finish stripping the other end of the wire and connecting it here to the dipole connector, so don't do it quite like I did and do that work ahead of time rather than the top of a ladder. And if you live in some place like Luck, Wisconsin, you're definitely going to want to do this indoors, perhaps sitting next to the fire. Not everyone lives like I do in a place in Tampa Bay where the weather was a nice sunny 75 degrees here today. I loosely installed both a dipole wire and the Christmas lights until I got to the end of the dipole and then I tightened them all up a bit. I chose to run a separate dipole wire because I didn't want to have to deal with the twist and recoil memory of the light wire bundle, so I just made sure I cut it a little short. If you believe this is a good option for you, think through longer term maintenance. How long are those plastic clips going to last in the elements? And is fastening the clips under the shingles the best method for you? I'm providing a proof of concept which you may be able to improve upon. Let's talk about resonance. It's a 20 meter dipole. I tested it lower to the ground before I installed it on the eave of the roof, and it was about 1.2 to 1. The light wire bundle was attached to the dipole wire, but the copper leads of the individual lights were not yet clipped. After I installed the antenna on the eave, my SWR was over 3 to 1, requiring me to use my tuner. So what happened? I think it's either the fact that the dipole was now close to the aluminum drip edge, fascia, and soffit, or when I pulled the individual lights and disabled them by stripping the copper leads, now all along the dipole I have these short lengths of wire. Perhaps that was messing with the SWR. So if you decide to try this idea exactly as I've installed it, a tuner for your dipole might be necessary. Given the restrictions of my HOA, the question for me is, does this thing here and can I make contacts? 
Let's start with a comparison on how well this antenna hears, and then you'll see me get a 5.5 report from POTA operator Kilo India 5 Golf Tango Romeo in Arkansas. And later in the day, with some improved propagation, I call CQ and pick up Kilo Oscar 4 Sierra Kilo Kilo in Alabama near the border of Tennessee. It's a lengthy QSO that I've pared down quite a bit. If this installation fits the use case for you and your homeowners association, you may want to follow the entire conversation as SIL provides a great deal of helpful feedback. Position two on the switch is the holiday light dipole and then position three will be the 73 foot end fed. I'm going to try to find a QSO going on and switch back and forth between the two so you can hear the receive quality. Roger, Roger, you're 5454 into Tampa, Florida. QSL, thanks for the 55, friend 73. CQ20, CQ20, this is Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf calling CQ on 20 meters. CQ, 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 CQ 20 meters, Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf calling CQ. Kilo Oscar 4, Sierra Kilo Kilo. Kilo Oscar 4, can you come back with that call sign again? Roger, Kilo Oscar 4, Sierra Kilo Kilo. Sierra Kilo Kilo, got it that time. This is Bob in Tampa, Florida. Uh, what's your QTH? Right at Tennessee State Line. Uh, would you give me your call again? I got Kilo Delta 4 is all I got. It is Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Uh, the name is Bob. I'm in Tampa Bay, Florida, and I'm testing out a new antenna today. You're coming in at about, uh, well, I wasn't looking at the meter. You're sounding uh, quite strong. Let's see what you come back next time and can actually give you a signal report. QSL, QSL, you're coming in at about a 5.4 and a 5.5, very strong signal, very readable. Uh, I live in a homeowners association. I have a 73-foot NFED wire that I normally use, but today I put up a dipole that is disguised behind some holiday, some Christmas lights, and that's what I'm on right now. It's a 20-foot dipole right up against the fascia board of the house, and that's what I'm testing. Would you mind if I switched over to my end fed and you give me a signal report on that well let me tell you right now this one uh, you're jumping between five seven and five nine but i think that's the band because yeah. uh, it's clear either way but but yeah go ahead and switch over if you want to yep qsl appreciate that let me switch over now okay we're over to the 73 foot end fed right now do you uh have a read on me here over uh it's five seven constantly it doesn't go to five nine yeah, whatever you're on now is it's dropping between five six and five seven again though I think it may be the fan and it's just noise. So I thought I would call CQ and see if anybody heard me and you most certainly did. If you don't mind, I'm gonna switch back over to that dipole real quick, over. Hey Roger. Okay, I'm back over in the dipole and the, the tuner was trying to tune again. It looks like it's fluctuating up and down. Are you still there, Sil? Sorry about that. This is Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Hey, Roger. I was watching your signal. It looked like you were putting out a signal, but there wasn't any audio or anything. I just waited to see what you were doing there. Uh, I don't, I'm not an expert on any of this, but I've got an inverted V fan dipole. It's homemade on a 10-gauge 7-strand wire on a 1-to-1 choke on it. And I talked all the way to Kuwait City, uh, Moscow, Russia, Finland, all over on this thing with 100 watts. 
QSL, QSL. I, I just get the feeling that uh, the way I configure this, uh, perhaps I need a choke on it. I don't currently have a choke on it. But again, uh, you've been incredibly helpful here. It's telling me that I'm going in a good direction. I'm just trying to work on something that is completely camouflage in the Homeowners Association. And uh, today was my first attempt at it. Over. Hey, Roger. Well, again, I'm not an expert, but after pulling this wire, somebody told me that if it's, uh, if the SWR is high on the low end, uh, that you need to shorten it. And you got to be careful shortening them things because it doesn't take much, uh, you know, shortening before you get too far gone. And what I always do is I just fold the wire back on itself and twist it until I get it pretty close to where I want it. And of course, if I've got more than about six inches folded back, then I tip that excess off. Roger that. Well, let me tell you, the entire QSO here, you've been coming in very consistent. Again, I'm not watching the meter the entire time, but as far as the signal strength, what I'm hearing, uh, it's been consistent from you the entire time, QSL. Hey, Roger. Well, I appreciate that. appreciate that. Well, I'll let you go on and see if you can raise some more, maybe some money further away. Of course, up here in North Alabama to Florida is not, not real close anyway, so... <laughs> QSL, QSL. Well, I'm in a retirement community, and, and at the moment, the, the benefits uh, outweigh the challenges. I'm just always trying to find my way around the restrictions with antennas, and, and today was my attempt. Again, your uh, having this QSO with me has been incredibly helpful. I want to say thank you very much, friend, in 73. Were we successful with our light modifications? Is anybody out there blinking? CQ20, CQ20, this is Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf calling CQ, CQ on 20 meters. CQ, 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 Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf calling CQ. Here's the final install. Looks just like a string of Christmas holiday lights, doesn't it? The feed line resembles a power cord, so I would take that and run it up against the underside of the soffit where it matches up to the house so it blends in and disappears. If you have any thoughts or recommendations on how to improve on this idea, leave them in the comments below. Let's get hanging our holiday lights and making contacts. 73 friends.